recent addition to the list of powerful female action characters is Imperto Furioso from Mad Max Fury Road. When the movie first came out, she was labelled as the whole film was labelled as a piece of feminist propaganda due to the amount of female presence in it. Which is kind of true, because she does sort of become the main main character in the film, with Mad Max, with Max himself being more of a supporting role. Her appearance doesn't really matter as she's not really feminine depicted with the buzz cut one arm and drives a large truck and shoots people a lot. Um, which makes her more of a gender neutral character and someone that isn't really sort of there to appeal to male audience. Her whole character is sort of tougher and more powerful than most of the male characters which are in the movie. And you and gives orders to Max, which to some male audience members can be quite seen as very feminist, but she's not meant to be depicted in a feminist way. Now, those were just some examples of female characters in more adult-focused cinema, <coughs> where usually most female characters are depicted in rather sexually desirable ways. But in children's media, it's a lot more different. The target audience isn't, doesn't really see women the way that older audience people would see them. So they don't need to be sexualized as much. Now, when you think of powerful female characters in children's media, you'd probably think of the Disney princesses and that. They're not what you'd consider to be typical powerful female characters, because most of the time, <coughs> they usually rely on males to save them or they're out to find a husband or something like that, and find love. There are a few female characters about that sort of, in children's media, that sort of go into the sort of the action-based roles. That there was from the long-running series Star Wars The Clone Wars main character, Ahsoka Tano. She's When you think of Star Wars characters that are powerful films, you usually think of the likes of the, the original series and that. But they're only one character, and they don't really interact with any other female characters in the films. She's the main character in many episodes of Star Wars The Clone Wars, and is able to hold her own against most male characters and few of the female episodes she has. While in earlier versions she was quite sexualized, even though she was meant to be depicted as a teenager, <coughs> later on she's become more of a practically dressed and more gender neutral character. Next up we have one of the more um, feminist not for feminine characters of the examples, which is Kim Possible, which had a series running from 2003 to 2007. It's one of the most popular Disney series of all time, and is one of the longest run. While she does have a high action orientated role, she still is depicted in a rather feminine way, in which she's just sort of depicted in, as a typical American teenager. The whole series itself could be interpreted as feminist because a lot of the male, ca male supporting characters are seen as quite idiotic or really inferior compared to her. So how can you tell that there is a powerful female presence in media? 
Well, there's two ways that I've found which there are. One of them is the Bechdel test, which is you have to have two female characters who talk to each other about something other than a man. And the other is, is the sexy lamp test, in which if you replace the female character in the movie with a sexy lamp, and it still has the same story and effect, then you know that that female character isn't the powerful enough presence. So, we've got a female examples of female adversaries, which having two female characters fight each other sort of brings it even more into the sort of what is injected to be feminist. But it's more just creating more powerful female characters that are more realistic. So, in Kill Bill, we have the bride and Oranishi, which fight and have, have a huge fight in the last piece. They're not really depicted as anything to be like sort of. Sort of sexy or anything like that, and are both pretty practical and deadly with swords. Next up we've got the Clone Wars, which has got a really gender-neutral character base, with about four different female characters which are prominently villains or antagonists in the series. Next up we've got the Kim Possible's main villain, which is Shigo, which also brings a lot of gender neutrality into it. And Ellen Ripley and the Alien Queen, it's, the Alien Queen's still female, they're still fighting, so it kind of counts for having gender neutrality. So how do these modern characters break stereotypes in, of females in media? But they're not portrayed in a romantic way to, as a lot of chick flicks usually depict women. They're equal or better than the supporting male characters, which brings them into a more action orientated role. They're not the typical damsel in distress, which is the sort of what we imagine to be the generic female character. And they don't need men to succeed, which is what a lot of what are usually known to be powerful female characters have. And they're not majorly sexualized for the male audience, as in the male audience doesn't dictate what their appearance is or what their actions are. And they're quite dynamic characters instead of a blank, a blank character which doesn't really interact much with anyone and is quite bland. There are, of course, far more examples that I could use. I mean, that while there is a presence, a large presence of powerful female characters, there should be more to bring more gender neutrality into media. Yeah, no, stop it now. Oh, yeah, stop it. Yeah. yeah, my phone went off and my 